There was only one outfit for UK-born Abigail Harden to wear when she gave blood for the first time. I've always known that I've never, I wouldn't be allowed to and I've always thought that's a bit of a shame. Abigail was one of many around the country to roll up their sleeves, along with John Fulcher, who lived in the UK during the 80s and 90s when outbreaks of so-called mad cow disease sparked deep fears. Donating blood's always something which has been on my to-do list, but up until today, um, just hasn't been possible. Two decades after the ban, research has found the chance of one of these donors giving contaminated blood is one in 1.4 billion. I'm pleased to say it means that people like me can donate. I did this morning and we predict will be uh, one of about 58,000 extra blood donations a year. Australian Red Cross Lifeblood says it's great timing. Right now, we need 33,000 donations a week. We're seeing up to 30,000 cancellations of reschedules of appointments every week as well due to COVID, flu and recently the New South Wales flooding. But still, not everyone who wants to give blood can. At the moment, uh, if you're a sexually active gay man in Australia, you can't give blood. No matter how safe your sexual activity, no matter how monogamous you are, LGBTQ activists say those who want to give blood should be assessed on their individual risk, not their sexual orientation. That's a decision for the Therapeutic Goods Administration, which says lifeblood would have to make a submission based on scientific data. But today's change means another 18,000 Australians are now eligible to donate. I got up this morning, put on the news and, and saw the sort of headlines saying that um, things have changed from today and here I am. The Blood Bank hopes many more will follow. Josie Taylor, ABC News.